Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the English broadcast of the Chinese LPL. We just witnessed Invictus Gaming pick up the first match of the best three series against Rogue Warriors. Rusty, welcome back to the desk. Backstage, I was asking Sorry. you what you wanted to talk about <laughs> when you came onto the desk after the match. And you just told me that was a weird game with a little bit of explicit language behind that. Why was it weird, Rusty? I'm never explicit. Fish, why would you even He's insinuate a such a thing? Australians are never... No, the game was weird because I didn't really know what to tell you. You asked me what happened in that game that stood out. I was like, well, I never really thought that IG were going to lose. Mm -hmm. And I saw Rogue Warriors doing things. Like, things were definitely happening. You saw the gold lead up and down at the end of the game as well, but... I still never felt anything from them that was resounding in a good way. There was individual performances and, and talents that I did enjoy watching and liked, but the 5v5 is what I mean when I say that it was just, it was weird, it was unusual, it felt awkward because IG was just always going to win. Yeah, I think immediately off of that, it's just because when Rogue Warriors take a win or a, a small skirmish, what are they going to be able to do with that? It feels like every minion wave was going up against mm -hmm. them, so their priorities were clean up the minion waves and then, oh! I guess they're back on the map. We have to base. <laughs> like literally, that's all it came down to. And whenever IG had yeah. the bottom side minion wave prep, mid lane minion wave prep, and then they look to a fight. If they win, they win big. They go for more vision. They go for a chip on tower because they're in the position of doing so. And that's why it feels like IG always had control, even though the gold graph didn't tell that tale. And that still fundamentally comes back to draft as the biggest problem for Rogue Warriors coming into the first game. That is something that can very easily be remedied before the second game actually starts in the draft phase. But bottom lane's pushing so the wave is set up you've got a varus it's going to push that lane no matter what against Callista. Callista lost the game with no target cc to lock her down because she never had an opportunity to do something yes. they were always stuck reacting to the play that ig were able to make same thing applies with mid lane the minion dematerializer on syndra kills the cannons pushes the wave that was the only problem syndra ever has suddenly two lanes are just auto winning and it doesn't matter that your top lane is losing once he gets to one item he's going to clear the entire wave instantly and that's when the whole map cascaded and that's just really fun to watch because usually you see people bring minion dematerializer and then they just kind of blow it all out when it like when they get into the game so they can have that four percenter but what's fun is that you can actually instantly kill a minion so you mentioned the the cannon and that's just like the moment the cannon comes into the way that's why i would love to see like the shot kind of see how he uses it in the mid lane because if he is just immediately when the cannon wave comes and merges he just uses it on the cannon yeah. wave that's an instant free wave for him and it actually fundamentally in my opinion anyway fundamentally changes recall timings for mid laners because usually you want to recall as the cannon waves meet each other so you have enough time to run back but what I would actually advise now on the opposite side of that is to instantly kill the cannon wave and then recall so that you have a full wave worth of time to just walk back to lane and you get the cannon. Yep, you won't lose the wave at all. You actually lose nothing with just taking a back timing at that point. So you just get so much either the back timing or the roam, right? Or the roam. If it doesn't turn into anything in terms of kills, then you just have free vision for your jungler, especially Ning, who's just being able to take advantage of a Nidalee matchup. So it's nice to see this from IG. What needs to change now is for, I suppose it just comes down to prioritizing the bot lane winning matchup. If your mid lane's not, like, you can't say much there because it's a Nazir. Yeah. You should expect a Nazir to win that lane or at least push the, the wave. Maybe he takes minion dematerializer himself, but what you can control is the bottom side of the map. Varus has just become the major pick of the day. So either you ban it away or you try and pick against it in terms of wave clear rather than skirmish. And I know that that's a person you wanted to talk about a lot, Raz. Flawless picking up in Italy heading into that game. Tell me more about this man. I think that I love the fact that he's willing to pick up carries, that he's willing to look for those trades. I thought that in this game that he had a good look towards top side to be able to dive that top lane, to be able to just create his own natural pressure. It was just very unlucky that he was able to ride into Ning. By the way, I say unlucky, but Ning was definitely looking to protect that ma matchup, so I thought Ning had a great response. But now it's a good question, a good look to see what he wants to do in the next game. Yeah, and we also mentioned it's going to be a Lee Sin off. It was a name that got the Lee Sin in that match. Potentially, it could go over towards Flawless in game number two. Speaking of which, we're going to send it over to our casters, Pulse and Frost to take us to the game. I think is a AD. 我们春季赛我们一起加油打出很好的成绩 It's actually really interesting, Joy being giving a lot of praise there to specifically SMLZ as he's going to be facing him today and not, you know, rookie in <laughs> the first he's actually facing in the mid lane. Uh, I, I mean, it, it's nice to hear Joy talk so highly of his teammates in China. They're uh, 
they have like words that are associated with mm -hmm. the players, and for Doing Beat was specifically teamwork. And I think if you yeah. go back to his JDG uh, days, you see that, you know, um, when Jingdong were having their run for playoffs, it was Loken who had a really bad series. You could see it written on Loken's face, you know, he was tearing up, uh, he was getting mentally just destroyed and destroyed on the rift, and it was Doin B who was trying to hard carry. And after losing that game, Doin B turned to Loken and he set his hand on his shoulder and it was just like, it's okay. And so I think that just speaks to Doin B's character that when you are on a team with him, he's not that superstar that's going to hard carry a game. He's a superstar in the sense that he will lift everyone up. Sure, and it's also a different scenario for him now in terms of like the people he's playing with the fact that SMLZ is down in the bottom lane and there's more power points on the team that he doesn't really need to just be the one-man army anymore and I think it was moving away from that anyway on the last team but now it's actually very much definitely the case as we get into our second game now which is <laughs> a cool sign that's amazing I'll give you and IG <laughs> in the second game for champion select we've got Zoe Tam Kent and Camille away from Rogue Warriors and it is Mazaha Rise and Cogmore from IG, it looks towards the first pick from RW. Uh, so it's still Azir as the uh, big mid laner of the last four that's left up. Rookie has shown that he's more than happy to take the Syndra into the Azir. He feels comfortable with the matchup. It should be noted that Invictus Gaming chose red side, so this might just be a very specific red side strategy that they have. We'll see how RW adapts to it, because so far they haven't. And first pick again, Callista to the bottom side for Rogue Warriors. And the other thing on Azir is that Doinby was never known as being a big meta player. You know, even when he was on the QG Reapers, uh, one of his big complaints and kind of one of the breaking moments with that team is that he had been practicing Quinn mid when she was very big, you know, way back in 2015, yeah. and he was upset that the team didn't allow him to play it. Um, so something like Azir, he looked uncomfortable on it, you know, making good enough plays, but nothing super flashy. It may just really not be in his comfortable wheelhouse. You know, he showcased Lulu uh, mid, the first guy to do that globally. First play, uh, player to do Vladimir as well. Ex so exactly. He was also allowed to do that uh, you know, in 2017. So if Doin B wants to pull something out, or rather if he has something available to bring out, then we'll definitely like to see it. Uh, Gangplank in the top lane once again. Alistair into the bottom lane for Bao Lan, though. So moving away from the Tam Kent, which has been banned, but also moving away from the Braum as well. I do like uh, Brom with the Callista, it gives a lot more kill pressure there, and if Flawless is really going to be paying attention to SMLZ and Kalua, you know, giving them that early gank, it helps to have the Brom down there that can set up more CC with Winter's Bite. And Nah, for top lane there for Mal, so he should have um, a better matchup, I want to say better matchup, it's the exact same matchup, so <laughs> we'll see if he can do better in that matchup, I should say. Varus for IG as well, the final pick on their first rotation of picks, and back over to the bounce. Yeah, very similar, but uh, so far Rogue Warriors kind of haven't pigeonholed themselves into that Nidalee matchup. They probably still want something fairly aggressive for Flawless as well as into Ning. Um, and there's a lot of options. Again, it's Callista Prom. You can always gank that le uh, lane free level 6 and post level 6. Gnar into Gangplank. It's not terrible either way. Um, I actually favor Gnar a little bit over because he is the range into the melee matchup. But, you know, it's Mouse versus the Shy, and the Shy is a very talented top laner. Mm -hmm. Yep. Got the Azir ban against Doin B, so we will have to bring something out in this game regardless. You see a stake at the back of the team as well, issuing commands. We've got Orianna will so be the banner here. So I wonder if the second ban is then going to be Syndra for RW. If they're just going to deny Orianna Syndra, since Azir is also banned, and kind of be like, okay, what's next? You know, Rookie, are you going to reach down for Cassiopeia now? Cassidy now is getting banned? Like, the mid lane pool is just shrunk so far. Cast in band towards Doinby as well, so actually just really hitting and Doinby as much as they can here, IG. Final band now from RW. He's already looking towards, they've got bot lane already. Yeah, he still has that Lulu if they want to make Flawless like the primary carry alongside SMLZ's Callista. Um, Lulu wouldn't be terrible in this composition, obviously you still want more damage or at least damage that's going to hyperscale late game. And Lee Sin what Ning picked up last game, so taking that away from him. But now over to Jack, love to pick up something now for his either mid laner, we are looking for a mid lane pick, and a jungle from Ning. Actually, same on both sides. I mean, do you grab something like Cassiopeia here just to deny the mid lane pool even further, or do you save that counter pick for Rookie as the last option? They could do that. They definitely could. And I think they may indeed just do it because Jarvan, the beloved pick, back into the jungle here for Ning. 
and that is a ridiculous composition from IG without even revealing their mid laner there. The amount of what is that? Are those cats? Sorry, I was very distracted. I by turned that away sign. for one second and they missed were it. Cats, just big cats. <laughs> <laughs> they play a face on them, and was there anything to do with it? I don't know. I didn't get to see. But. As I was saying, though, the amount of. Uh, like in initiation potential from IG is disgusting right now. Alistair Jarvan is an absolutely brutal combo, so IG's Gomp, even without their mid laner revealed, is terrifying. RWD actually moved towards a supporter pick though, so it wasn't Lulu, but it was Karma for Doinby in the mid lane, and another Nidalee pick from Flawless. So it didn't work out in game one, but Flawless saying that it wasn't the champion, maybe it was me, maybe it was the team, maybe it was something else, but it wasn't the pick. So we'll bring it again into the jungle and see if we can win that 2v2 once more. But Cassiopeia, you ran on the money, so it wasn't a denial there, but it was the final pick. Uh, yeah, and it made sense again. The, the pool had just been shrunk so far. We've seen Cassie uh, come out as a good counter into Rise, and actually Rise was uh, banned this time around, and we know that Rookie is a phenomenal Cassiopeia, yep. so no surprises that that will be what he lands on, but Doinby obviously had to know this, looking for the karma, and this is what we were talking about. You know, Doinby is not a meta slave. He's known as being hyper-creative, not only in how he builds, you know, standard meta champions, uh, but in also the champions that he plays outside of the meta. So, reach for the Lulu on uh, game one for 2018 for him, now reaching for the Karma, and I think this might actually be our first Karma mid of 2018. It's not the hugest statement in the world, considering we've had, what, five good days of play in the LPL, but you're probably right. I'm not just saying the LPL, I mean, like, globally. I okay. haven't seen it at all in the LCK oh, sure. either. Yeah. And also uh, possibility. Europe was just running around with just rise, flexing <laughs> on rise, flexing <laughs> on rise. <laughs> yep, very, very true, but it will be him taking more of a supportive role as long as he goes for the uh, supportive item build. We could also go full AP, like we've seen some karmas in the LPL go absolutely off with those massive powered up Qs come out. Yeah, I'm actually really curious what his runes are running. I guess we'll get a peek at that as we go into the game. Mm -hmm. um, I know that when Rusty was experimenting with Karma kind of uh, preseason, she's fallen off because as the sure. adjustments came through with the runes, but Ultimate Hat was quite fun on Karma. Oh yeah, with the mantra, because uh -huh. you, oh my. Yeah, you'd probably, you'd charge up so quickly as oh, well, yeah. that'd be absurd. <laughs> uh, but that yeah, was particularly through the uh, bottom lane in the support position. Although yeah. I bet you could still do it on mid lane position and Doinby typically likes to run full damage Karma. This is not a secondary support Karma. Um, so this is one that is going to nuke you hard. Sorcery first tree. Probably inspiration secondary, but there is a good chance that we do actually see uh, Ultimate Hack come out here. But taking a look at the compositions, it's a pretty standard 5v5 comp from Invictus Gaming. It is much more a uh, kind of hit and run mobility comp from uh, Rogue Warriors, but a lot more comfort picks. Follows again taking that Nidalee, Doin be showcasing his karma, so hopefully they can ground themselves in that comfort and come back in this series. I can hear which uh, team the crowd is behind today, but apparently it was uh, the second karma that we've had, but to be fair, it was also Doinby. <laughs> so one of the uh, cool things about the arena here in Shanghai, we have an arena that seats uh, 500 people, um, but the teams, or excuse me, the fans actually split themselves in our arena. They sit in groups of fan clubs, and so you usually have, uh, you know, Rule Warriors fans on one side and Invictus Gaming fans on the other side, and then their fan clubs lead those chants in the beginning. They count it off, uh, and then one person who's always very loud in the back. <laughs> Do you think they nominate a person to lead the cheer? Do you think you have to, like, petition for that? You know, like or it just happens? Do you think it's just like a... <laughs> if no one's going to do it, someone just does it? I would hope it would be, like, the captain of the yeah. fan club. They're about to get trapped right here. The Shy's coming down. They are very much aware that Rogue Warriors are trying to take this red buff away. And this is going to be a massive time loss. Cheers for the leash, guys. Unless Flawless is actually going to try and contest this, which is risky in its own right. The Shy is just shoving him away. And Ning will get his first buff. They're actually... Did he really just start a crooks? No. Dragging us away from Flawless. That is absolute disaster for Flawless. He's going to get caught out here he's as well by the Shy. No, he's not out. He's going to have to go all the way around topside, which is a bigger time loss. The Shy will probably get another parlay on him on the way out. And he had to pop one of his uh, pots from his potion. So Flawless is... That hurts, nearly. We talked about it in the first game, you know, falling behind early uh, can really throw a wrench in everything that she wants to do. It's kind of high risk, high reward type of play style. Um, not only does he lose a ton of time, but losing that pot. Looks like he's going to have to go for a wolf start. He is up a creek without a paddle. No, he's, he's going he's into the bottom side. He's running towards his red buff because he wants to make sure that Ning doesn't go immediately red to sure. red and deny him the three buff. So this actually happened exactly in... Uh, Samsung Galaxy, no, uh, KSV versus uh, 
the new Longju team, yeah. and Peanut made this type of invade, um, but the difference was is that he had the Cassiopeia, and Cassie was able to get the early push and then rotate to him. With the Karma and with the trap set up, uh, Rogue Warrior just got blasted out of the yeah. water there for early level one. Well, for us, at the very least, will secure his red buff, plus it gives him a bit, bit of health regeneration as well as he moves throughout the jungle. But still, it's, it's not great. Ning will get uh, his both buffs and accelerated start as well, courtesy of Rogue Warriors. And the nice thing is that Flawless isn't going to get three buffs. So, um, yeah. fortunately, he did a good job, recognized what was potentially at stake and just collapsed. But like you said, is very delayed to the jump start that Ning now has, 16 CS to four currently. Now we've got to look at the knock-on effect in the rest of the lanes because Rookie gets to push in. As per usual, bottom lane just sat in his 2v2 right now as well. Looks like Biscuit's on both sides for the supports. Yeah, and it's control the fact that uh, Cassiopeia just got the sweeper and she swept down. So Ning knows that the uh, tri brush is clear bottom. So he expertly uses his flag and drag around that vision, is going to sidestep the Callista. And there, uh, he's going to steal the Raptor camp, but there was an opportunity that he could use that information to sneak in behind SMLZ yeah. and Kalua. And even if he doesn't go down there, they need to respect it. He will get the Rave camp instead, and there is still a chance for him to go to the bottom side, depending on the minion wave and how it's doing. But Flores will take the initial jump back to base, get the tracker's knife, in fact and get back onto the map, but he doesn't have a lot of jungle remaining. Yeah, and it's even Doinby now. Like, the Flawless, unfortunately, the level one has slipped into both bottom lane and mid lane. Like, Doinby having to sit by his tower and just let Rookie do yep. what he wants to with the wave because knows that Jarvan is somewhere inside his jungle. And the Shy, he's just going to keep on farming in the top lane as well. I mean, it didn't really affect him too much. He was just able to defend. And the difference between him and Nar is not too significant either. So he's just able to uh, get all of those sacks of gold, the extra gold from Kleptomancy on top of that. And Flawless will get his Crow Camp, though he is actually moving towards the bottom side here. Yeah, he's looking for that gank. This is something that they didn't have last time, which was uh, some sort of CC. Now that Kalua is on the Braum, he does have that option, but it looks like Flawless is instead going to go back for his Krugs, because yeah. he left two little ones alive. He did. Indeed, that's a bunch of extra gold left on the table for him. That's going to be a teleport back into the mid lane, though, by Doinby. He's picked up what looks to be the Frostfang, so he is going towards the damage build once more. Jackie Love, where's the spear going to come one out? more hit. It's all on this javelin that hits a minion. But this time around, they at least got a summoner, which was more than we could say what happened in game number one. But with that information, Ning is possibly just automatically running top lane. He's grabbing the Scuttle Crab right now, but since the Shy backed, Probably going to go back to his Raptor camp. Also gives a bit of control to the bottom lane as well. Clue were able to step up into that push and a teleport back to lane by the Shy. I want to uh, give a lot of credit to Flawless here. After the gank bottom in which he burned the flash, he actually pulled a similar maneuver to Dandy. But hold on. Ooh, getting flash. another flash as well. That's pretty good. He, uh, he pulled a similar move to Dandy in which he didn't go and press deep vision up into Ning's jungle, he actually immediately backed and reset his position. Now, why this is interesting in terms of pathing is it uh, helps hide where he is more. The enemy jungler, the enemy team, it's harder to keep track mm. of where the jungler is going to be because you would expect, okay, Nidalee ganked bottom, there's none of her camps left, you can see that in her CS, she's probably going to step into your jungle and place deep vision. But Flawless didn't waste any time, he's like, no, I'm going to completely reset and hide myself and hopefully open up another opportunity else. And the jungle world definitely is starting to stabilize now. Yes, he's still down significantly in farm, but in terms of the amount of pressure he's managed to get, two flashes on the bottom side, courtesy of him and Doinby. So that should be helping out Asim Izzy a bunch. You can see that resulting in the gold totals in terms of that farm. There's a big mini wave crashing now, but Clue is stopping this one from coming in. Baolan forcing the flash out onto SMLZ. Ning turning back on towards the Braum. He's got the flag drag, knocks off the AD carry. But Kalua still very low. Ning choosing to back away, and Baolan not going all the way in. In fact, it's now SMLZ. He's on the offensive. Should be able to get the stun funds of Baolan. Very good flash from Kalua right there to save his life. Uh, making sure that Jarvan couldn't get it. That said, Rookie now sees an opportunity to strike. Ward goes down by Flawless. He's very much aware that the last play was in the bottom side of the map. The Shy, we're taking a bit of damage here. I'm surprised that last auto attack didn't land for the Hyper Brock. That would have been in range. That's what Mouse was hoping for. They would get in range with the extra movement speed from Hyper and then hit him with the Wallop. It's always unfortunate when the hitboxes don't work out for you. Hello. No, though we will get the ultimate off. The Shy forced to use his own there, but he goes right into mini form. This is going to be a kill one versus one. That was the worst time for him to transform. 
Oh boy, that hurts. And you can see it written on the Shy's face. Didn't expect the transformation to come out, so he didn't expect the ranged auto, or excuse me, the ranged boomerang, because he had flash. He could have easily yeah. sidestepped if he saw it coming. Could have run away. At the same time, if he flashed away, then Mouse would have followed, but he could have flashed earlier or not engaged again. I believe he also had oranges. You know, he was kind of waiting for the proper moment to yeah. block it because I didn't see him use it in the initial part of that fight. Hopefully, we'll see a replay and we can try to keep track sure. of that because it felt like a situation where the Shy sitting on caught, possible just oranges. Straight caught unaware. Yeah, and had the flash and was trying to, you know, bait in Mouse for over committing. But this is the second time he's been caught out by Nas Rage Meter. Like, of all the mechanics to get caught out on, like, it's one that's very obvious. Like, you can see it ticking down. I'm just very surprised that the Shy, of all players, that we have in the top lane in the LPL would fall prey to that. And that's the thing that I really want to underline is that this is, if this is your first time seeing the Shy, this is so unlike him. This guy made his reputation on how good he was mechanically in the 1v1s, just making matchups work for him that shouldn't have worked, and then also impressed with his ability to 5v5 and synergize with yeah. the team. For all the top lanes out there, let me underline it for you. You know when you play against that Fiora and they're really, really twitchy and every single time you throw out an ability, they instantly rip you're like, this guy's really annoying. That's the Shy. In fact, his first game he played the Fiora and was exactly like that. He went 0-6, but it was still very entertaining to watch. Now he's actually a very well-rounded player, but this is not the type of guy you see making mistakes. And sadly, we didn't get to see that one more time, but regardless, that has put him down a little bit in lane. You can see that opening up in terms of the CS difference, uh, but that's really good for Mouse. Yeah, and it does op open up more opportunities now for Flawless if he wants to actually try to punish this gangplank. Both top laners uh, still have their flash, neither one has their teleport, so there actually is a big window or incentive for Flawless to team up with Mouse on the top side and really punish gangplank so he can't get back to lane and pick up some CS. And what Flawless did last time, there's an even bigger opportunity this time, so I would like to see it, though looking towards the uh, mid lane real quick as the fr Frostbanks are both being completed. I mean, really, the uh, the entire map is Flawless's what is playground. It? Yeah, I mean, he's got Callista ultimate bottom if he wants to go down there. You know, maybe you skip out on mid lane. Maybe you just let that one go. But top lane, bot lane, he's a free man. He can go wherever he wants. He is, but the key thing that, that you said was that not mid lane. And I was coming into this series being like, it's all going to be about the mid lane and the jungle synergy. That's what you promised me, Frost. But it's definitely about that, but not in the sense of like the 2v2 <laughs> skirmishes. No. Uh, but definitely no, in the not. sense of control and how it bleeds to the rest of the map. Because currently this is another lane that I'm looking at in the mid lane where Rookie has a 30 farm lead at 10 minutes. I said the exact same line last game as a teleport is the bottom side. Battle land was stopped, I think mid headbutt there onto Kaloa. Good face goes. call. Rookie gets to slow down as Esmel Zebra Flawless has turned up to the fight. In comes a Cataclysm. Kill over to Cassiopeia and perfect timing on Ming. Auto attack flash forwards from Bao Lan secures the second kill. That was also a bizarre flash from Flawless, who just kind of flashed at Jarvan. Does this do damage? No, I guess it doesn't. It was definitely an alpha move right there. He was trying to scare him away from his bot lane. Didn't work weirdly enough. If I just hit him with my face. <laughs> yeah, maybe he'll freak out and back off. Unfortunately, it didn't happen. And IG take two kills, so take the gold lead once more. And again, it's that opportunity where Flawless uh, and Rogue Warriors had the opportunity to make the proactive plays. Uh, unfortunately, the cooldown on teleport wasn't available for them, whereas GP was able to participate with the fight by having the GP ultimate, mm -hmm. um, as well as Rookie's TP coming through. Such good timing as well. That was ultimate from Jackal of right into the teleport the instant it landed, and that gave Rookie the time to follow up with the ultimate, and the Calicum. I'm looking out for this flash right now. Uh, Flawless is going to flash into Jarvan. <laughs> Uh, yeah, is. and then that happens. Fist of Fury, in comes the cow. And I don't know if maybe we just mistimed the stopwatch timer, or what was happening there, but also very peculiar from Flawless. Normally he doesn't make those types of yeah. errors. I wouldn't be surprised if he's a bit rattled as well, because these two games he's just not had good starts to the game both times for different reasons as well. Those so. are tilters. Yeah, 100%. I'm coming into the second game. They're not that far behind, honestly. Rogue Warriors, yes, they lost a couple kills there, but it's not the end of the world. There's still a good chance for them to do well as we approach the mid-game, especially because Joinbee's taking more of a supportive role. And wait a minute, that's an Unfiends and Hot... Didn't you say he was a full AP karma? It is only the first item, Young Pulse. Just wait. If this is Doinby of He can't be full AP of the first items of the If if this is Doinby of 2017, that car
karma, because everyone, every analyst is like, ah, yes, but the karma damage will fall off. She does not scale into late game. I don't know why I'm using this accent, but we're gonna <laughs> go with it. But not Is that like your D and D accent? I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> his uh, his karma comes out like 40 minutes, and suddenly there's massive nuke damage. You're like, where did that come from? Oh my God, it's Doinby's karma. So I still have faith. All right, I'll. Reserve judgment until we hit 30 minutes, but you better know I'm coming for you <laughs> in 27 minutes. But yes, it makes sense. It's the Athene's build, of course it is. But yeah, I swear there'll be a death cap <laughs> later. <laughs> All right, fair enough. And now it's just not only his wallops, but he's accumulated a really big CS lead off the back of that kill earlier. Triforce has been completed though at 12 minutes, which is good timing for the Shy. And the thing is, is that CS lead will continue to grow because the Shy is not getting any sort of support. Uh, Invictus Gaming have made their claim that it is about the bottom lane right now, which again makes sense. Gangplank has the uh, the global ultimate, Mouse doesn't have his TP, so we should continue to kind of see the same maneuvers where it's IG placing down this battle vision, then using the control of the mid lane, and uh, slipping in to contest these micro-objectives. exactly what Ning is doing. Spike comes down and Ning will get the last hit. Walk away with it. Rookie and Battle Island actually came up to help him, so there was nothing that Flawless could do in that situation. And the cool thing is, is then moments like that could possibly turn into tower dives that Rogue Warriors have to respect, which is why you see Callista and Braum being so respectful of the creep wave right now, even looking at backing at their tower before deciding, okay, it's safe, we can step forward, simply because of the Alistar. And that's why this pick is so important in the LPL, because it unlocks so much play potential for the bottom side of the map. We're actually hitting spike time as well for a lot of the players on IG. Top lane hit the Triforce as we already mentioned, but Gwinsu's finished and the bottom side as well. And we just got confirmation that it is the Gathering Storm on Rookie. So ah, excellent. Like I, uh, I said, he does Unsealed Spellbook and then he'll take Sorcery Tree and mm -hmm. he almost always takes Transcendence and Gathering Storm. So the late game scaling damage potential from those two runes on someone like Cassiopeia yeah. is disgusting. And he's like, I, I can win the lane by myself. He's 30 CS over Doinby, no problems. What I really like about that is as soon as he takes Gathering Storm, you know that idea is just like, it, it, give, it paints out a map for the early game. It's just like 100% they do not matter, it doesn't matter so much that they're playing it passively, though Doinby is very much extended in the mid lane and he's gonna be punished for it. Uh, wrong, wrong place, wrong time. say about that, yeah. He was just pushed up. Just sloppy. Yeah. Uh, Baolan, uh, formerly Megan, so it's the exact same guy if you don't recognize him. He's pretty famous for making these roaming plays, but that said, if you check the clock, it's 15 minutes. It's true. Don't be should 100% expect that there could be 20 people in his lane at any given time. Like, I get it, he wants to catch up and farm because he's losing so drastically, but now he's losing more. And yeah, Baolan, I actually haven't seen the classic uh, Megan Baolan play where he comes from topside with mobility boots at like five minutes for some reason. And it's more never than not, it happens. <laughs> yeah. Okay, deep teleport. Here we go. We got some action. Let's go. Nope. <laughs> I appreciate the pass though, Frost. You came in at the, at the right height. <laughs> that was actually comedic on the cancel. <laughs> oh my goodness. Dombey was like, not again. Was that Dombey? Yeah, it was Dombey. It was Dombey. <laughs> Wait, was he stopped though? Because I don't think he cancelled it because it's on full cooldown. He's from. He was doing it from base, but hold on, we got a skirmish. They're going for it. The distance. Yep. Okay, get the stun down on Braum. Obviously, Osbit into the fate score. He's needs to get out of there. Actually, misses through. Goes all the way through. Zonia's out. Jackie Love, and he's on the wrong side of the map. That's not your tower. A second kill over to Jackie Love. Miscalculation there from Rogue Warriors botlings because they were definitely the instigators in that 2v2 skirmish initially and they could have backed off at any moment. Decided to go in, lost track, lost the fight, and may lose their tower as Dwayne B and Paulus are by our wave clear combined. We will keep this standing. Oh, that just feels bad. Like, Rogue Warriors tried to make a play, but it does not work out. Rookie, however, might pick up the first tower of the game, which is 650 gold over to him. So, yep. This has gotten pretty bad. It's definitely spiraling out of control, but here we go. We're actually looking at the uh, second part of that. And as I said, SMLZ and uh, Killa, they could have just, you know, disengaged from this. They decided that they wanted to go all in. Unfortunately, uh, I should say, fortunately, great stopwatch, perfect timings there um, from Jackie Love means that the Callista ultimate doesn't count for anything. Jarvan shows up on the back half yep. just as some moral support. Hey guys, I know you've got this 2v2, but just in case, this is my kill. Five to one now. And IG, two kills over to that mid lane, the Gathering Storm Cassiopeia, another two kills in the bottom lane to Jackie Love. He's working his way towards the second item. 
And top lane's on an island. <laughs> They're just chilling in top lane. Meanwhile, Mouse is like, what is happening on the bottom side? <laughs> Get it together! He says, I'm 172 farm as not. I've only farmed my own wave. I've got a solo kill on my top laner. This is literally <laughs> solo queue right now. Elo yep. hell in top side. And who would have expected it would be for Mouse? Yeah. I mean, Mouse is a good player. Now this is the moment where he starts pinging. He's like, oh, now I guess I'm losing to everyone else's lanes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is where the spillover happens, unfortunately. Here comes Rocky. There's the ultimate. Gets the slowdown on to Mouse. Rocky, I will the, yep. remember you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. And now all the lanes are losing. <laughs> Oh, it's not. Hasn't been a good. Hasn't been a good start to this game. Level one really put them on the back foot, and Rogue Warriors are just Ooh. stumbling desperately for anything there. As Toy now flashes forward, yeah, flashed into the shy, doesn't get the tether down, dodges out the javelin. The shy, you can turn this one around. He's Here got the Jarvin. team coming. Ning wants the knockup. He's waiting on flawless, but he gets the double knockup into the cataclysm. The shy, they're still paying attention to the barrels, but he's putting out the damage regardless. Ning comes in and rock. Another flyby comes into the top lane, gets another kill. Actually, gives them both over to the top lane. Bot lane is having a rumble for some reason. Two versus two. Got the teleport coming down now. And that's MLZ. He's already dead. Mouse into the bottom lane, and that's going to be trading up to Kalua. Mouse actually doesn't want to be here anymore. This is he be just ace. died in the top lane. And if they do this in 12 seconds, it will indeed be the ace. Though Mouse is an absolute tank right now. The guy just won't go down. The Shy is going to have to chase him down. And it won't be an ace because Flawless is now respawning. So even if Mouse dies here, don't worry, guys. It's not going to be a cross map ace. You mean when he dies here? Got him. <laughs> It was a long chase. We got there in the end. Uh, but it was an unofficial ace. Every single member of Rogue Warriors died. Brilliant use of teleport from the Shy, and from bad to worse. Pulse, that is what desperation smells and looks like. True, that was also a hexakill because Mouse died in the top lane, then, then teleported back teleported to the bottom lane and, died, and died again. Oh, we're yeah. not done. Rookie. What's he got? He doesn't have a summoners. He does have ult, though. And Doinby will get the lockdown, though. He's taking a bunch of damage. In comes the bottom side. Doinby will find a kill. Third kill of the game to Rogue Warriors. We did get to see one of my favorite interactions, although hold off, because we got to watch the replay of that 45-second skirmish. Actually, no, we've already skipped the top side. So basically what happened the top side is Doinby got thirsty, died for his thirst. The Shy then was like, top side, got it unlocked, got my big gulp, now I'm going to come down bottom and get my refill. There's a lot of things that were going on in that analogy, but you are absolutely right. Jackie Love went down, and then Mouse arrives, and we don't need to see the rest of that. It was a very long chase. But IG have actually started off the Baron here. Flawless, around the backside. Well, he, kn he knows they're in the pit now because he wanted over it. That spear Lands on spear Dragon. Onto Baolan. Can he do it? Gets another spear jump. Oh, oh no! Baolan with the denial. No smite for you today, Flawless. No, he's pushed up to the front lines and he has transformed, but it's the back line that's getting torn apart right now. Down goes Doinby, Baolan walking away, somehow he's still alive. Lands the headbutt just to annoy his team there. Kalua pops the ultimate, but it's two for one and the Baron to IG. I just imagine bottom lane that there's just some classical piano music playing, just something really calm as close to just farming yeah. <laughs> Okay. Uh. It is now ballooned close to that 10k gold mark at 21 minutes. As soon as this tower drops, it certainly will be an IG. Again, from level one, Flawless got off to a bad start on a poor invade, and just, it's gone so far out of control. Every single lane saved for top lane was winning for Invictus Gaming. It then spilt over to the top lane wave. The Shy is now confident enough that he will chase anyone Ooh. off his lawn. That was a lot of, oh, that's a lot of damage. That moment when the play by play just turned into like hockey commentating. Oh, 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 that was a big hit. <laughs> and the top lane will go down. Uh, Herald also popped in the mid lane. I didn't see how much he work Herald managed to do, but it looks like almost cracked mid lane tower. But we'll see that one one more time. And I want to see that glorious headbutt from Balan. Yeah, credit to uh, Megan Balan right mid there. Hop. As soon as Flawless comes in, he punts him out of the the, uh, the circle, and then it's just over from there. Ning finds a great ultimate, and Mouse is just doing whatever he can, but his team is too far gone, and they don't have their AD carry. Again, SMLT, classical piano music down bottom, just meditating. <laughs> <laughs> and he's only got 200 farm. It's not like he's just absurdly farmed right now. But that's unfortunate. SMLZ, he's now on two items. We'll see if he can do anything with the extra farm that he did accrue earlier, but that's the question. 
as the siege continues. Bottom side, we've got two people here. Mid lane pushing off as well, and actually Shai is just doing split push duty, and that tower was very low as he approaches, so indeed Harold did do some work. No one can stop him. The thing is, his mouse can try to hold him off, but he actually can't fight the Shai at this point because Gangplank is 5-1-5, and five. so Invictus Gaming, depending on how they want to play this out, they can always just look for a 4-1, or because they have the Alistair and the Jarvan, just dive. Yeah, they're pushing up to the tower right now, and pretty much no contest whatsoever. At some point, they're going to have to draw the line, and I think it's going to be right about now as Mouse pushes in. That's going to be the Cataclysm coming down, but this fight is not even going to be remotely close. SMLZ trying to cut away, but in the wrong direction, and the support comes in to try and save him. Flawless, he's back at base. He's chucking spears, he's chucking javelins, but in the end, IG are going to take everything they own. Yeah, at least two inhibitors, preferably the Nexus right here, because uh, that's, again, an ace. Yes, it is, Frosk. We end the game, four kills to 20. And the towers will go down. It was a very much an easier game in game two to IG as they finish off the Nexus. And of course, they'll sound them as well. Get in there, Shy. That's the series over to Invictus Gaming. I'm just, I'm really conflicted, Pulse. So I wanted to be super hyped for Rogue Warriors. You know, this assembly of players, Doinby, Flawless, I'm like, this great things can come out of this. You then throw steak on top, looks great. And then I'm super stoked about Invictus Gaming. Jackie Love joins the roster, the Shy's there, Rookie, they have everything they need to be an actual contender for the title. And yeah, someone had to lose today, but I didn't want it to be like this. <laughs> IG just absolutely thrashed Rogue Warriors. That wasn't a competition. Yeah. That was basically one hand tied behind their back and just slapped them around the rift. I agree. It was very much like a not like this moment today because I was hoping to see more from Rogue Warriors. But like, we actually came to this match. I was like, I, I actually don't know if this is going to be a clean game on 2 and 0 over to IG. It very much could go the distance, could go to get three games. But whether it's a credit to IG or less credit to the side of Rogue Warriors looking at how the jungle and the mid synergy went and how the early game control just went absolutely awfully in both games and how that affected the games as a whole. I mean, in all honesty, if you were in scrims and a level one started like that, that's an immediate pause remake. Like you would just, in, in scrims, you would just throw that game away. Mm -hmm. That's and when we play games together and you're like, it's over. <laughs> like that's that's one of those games, right? Hands off the keyboard. <laughs> Welcome back, Rusty, to the desk. Hey, those games happen often. <laughs> <laughs> but she's right. <laughs> No, I, th I think level one's the place that you have to look at first, right? The team composition, you mentioned it's happened in the LCK before where they try to invade mid laners. You'd expect a Karma has the ability to rotate and come and help, but a Cassiopeia matches it very well. And the way Rookie plays lanes means that you can't step up and clear those back wave minions. You're going to eat a bunch of fangs to the face. So uh, Doinby wasn't able to clear the waves, wasn't able to impact that. And the jungle, actually very well done by the Shy in particular to prevent Nidalee from even being near the buff. He stood between them and there was literally nothing that they were able to do on the side of Rogue Warriors to prevent that level one from happening. And you're right, that does influence the rest of the game. You have to give kudos to the way that Flawless got back into it though, and through the bottom lane being able to place Vision at the blue buff to know where to go next. So I feel like that was a big factor in getting everyone ahead on IG. I don't think it put Rogue Warriors too far behind. It was the follow-up that continued to happen and they just got further and further behind from that. Yeah, it just kind of spiraled out of control. I mean, what else could I say, right? Like, you laugh at it, it's just like, well, yeah, that did happen, you know? So it just spiraled out of control. But what more could have Rogue Warriors have done? Because it was very much a situation in game one where we looked at it, and it was just like, right here, this is when we need to see the Nilly pick work out, or this is where we need to see the evade work out, and unfortunately, it just didn't. Uh, the top lane, there were multiple opportunities, especially because Mouse won the 1v1 against the Shy, that they could have looked to try to punish that gangplank. But time and time again, you know, either Ning had a good read on Flawless and was able to kind of dictate his pathing or force Flawless to react to him, or Flawless just had a bad read on what lane he wanted to prioritize. But that's, you know, a, a couple of games in a row now where Flawless is just not giving Mouse the time of day. There's been this really interesting thing, and I'm going to talk for a little bit here, so bear with me. I think it's actually Rookie that is the difference, and not just because he's playing Cassiopeia into Karma, but actually just because he's taking Minion Dematerializer. Like, you're against a Karma as a cast, you're probably going to equalize each other and push and then both disappear and roam, but the way that Dematerializer works with Cannon Waves is every third wave, Rookie has tempo. Rookie has the ability to go somewhere, and that's even up against the Teleport from Karma. And my opinion on this particular rune now is, in the middle lane, it's kind of like Relic Shield. If you don't have it, then you have to win your lane. If you don't have it and they get away with doing all of these extra things, they just get tempo, they win the entire map because Rookie's unlocked. So I feel like the answer to it is to have it yourself. The same thing with Relic Shield in the bottom lane. 
And Ning will be taking Man of the Match in the second game. And also first game, he did exceptionally well as well, playing into Flawless. So congratulations to him on the job, no less. Yeah, 1-0 and 13, a ridiculous scoreline for Jarvan, making sure that he was setting up his team at every opportunity. And if you're new to the LPL, if you don't know who Ning is, you need to learn this guy's name. I think he is going to be the next big jungler for the LPL. He's got the stats mm -hmm. to back it up, and he certainly has the play style. Yeah, Ning the Shy, Jackie Love, very exciting members on IG, and he is one of the trio that you have to be happy to see and very excited to watch in the future because they looked so good last year. They've added Jackie Love, and he's still young. He's still very good at League of Legends, considering how young he is, and what we saw in this set was smart stuff from Ning. Just awareness in mechanically in team fights and skirmishes, when to engage and who to hit, but also decision making through the jungle, where to be and where to place vision, working with Rookie and working with their top lane of the Shy as a team. It's honestly very good to see from him. It's actually really interesting that the storyline has changed from like accelerated growth now for the team. Like we look towards a team like TOP and we were like, okay, what does next split look like after a, a split of learning? But right now it's just like, all right, three series from now, is this gonna be the IG that's gonna take over the league, take over the Eastern Conference and then move into the playoffs, right? It's kind of like a question of how long will it take Invictus Gaming to realize their full potential. We know that Ning, Jackie Love, and the Shy are all great. We know that Rookie is amazing, and even Balan, uh, formerly Megan, are, are very strong players. So now the question is, what is their actual ceiling, and when do they hit it? Is this going to be a you know spring split MSI representative Invictus Gaming, or is this going to be a you know second seed, third seed world Invictus Gaming? Yeah, and for me, looking at it, the difference is just the team play aspects. IG yep. won their set today by being better individual players than Rogue Warriors. And the difference when they play against someone like EDG or RNG will be how do they operate, how do they work in the 5v5 sense in a macro style against these teams that are good at it, against these teams that are experienced and can do that against you. I feel like that's where IG need to grow and get better. As we mentioned, they're young players, they're good players. That will be the difference. 100% because we've already seen it right like we saw them face RNG and that was some of the troubles that they had going up against them And it's gonna be a while until we see them play again against some better teams gonna be like two or three weeks Then we'll have cross conference So we will actually get a chance to see IG play against some of the other great teams in the opposite group I'm actually really happy that you bring up cross conference because we do have to look back at Invictus Gaming's group You know RNG, IG, Sooning, LGD, JD, TOP it Makes it very easy when the banners yeah, are right Yeah the banners <laughs> are right there, Rogue Warriors Those aren't, that's, that's not stiff competition If you put them in the other group are they still a second place team and I think that's the big thing for IG and if they want to actually you know elbow in and be contenders I have to feel confident saying that if they're in the EDG WE group that they would be second or first place and so cross conference really matters for me as yeah. in terms of really scoping out Invictus Gaming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. If we're looking at Rift Rivals worthy teams as well, when the top four go, do they actually slot into the fourth place team in the entire region? And that's worked out through the end of the first split. So cross conference a good indicator. And then you follow that up with the end of the split results going into Rift Rivals of are they actually as good as the others above them? True. I mean, realistically, who, who else is in that conversation? So if we're just looking at like IG in terms of their fourth spot, like who else is really competing over that spot? So we look at OMG obviously because they went towards last Rift Rivals, yeah. but who else would really be there? I actually think that Fun Plus X is someone worth considering yep. right now. Now, and Rogue Warriors is someone that's just always going to be there in the conversation. Sooning, uh, Billy Sooning Billy is Billy. the other one that I was going to bring up as well. I feel like they're going to be the dark horse in that crop as to if they would step up and be a fourth place team. But from what we've seen so far and from what people have been saying even in all the videos, they're a very good team. Yeah, 100%. I mean, IG have already shown today that the straight of just beaten Rogue Warriors, so you can immediately put them down in the tier list. So it's actually really cool to see how fast they are accelerating in their growth. And a lot of it, I think, is actually towards Jack. Do you want to take a second to look at Rogue Warriors? Because it's, again, it's a team that we have a lot of hype be behind, right? Like, not in terms of the players, but a lot of other teams were saying that this team looks very good together in the same way that FPX did. But today, they didn't showcase any of that. Like, jungle just completely self-destructed. I mean, to be as kind as possible, today's games for Rogue Warrior were just an absolute disaster. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, just a uh, really wonky kind of draft phase, very weird execution on the draft phase that they put together. Like, you could clearly see the game plan, but then they didn't follow through with it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so I, I want to just chalk it up to it, it was a bad day, because they looked very yeah. different against T.O.P., and it wasn't just sure. caliber of opponent, but also the choices they were making. Yeah, I'd say it was disjointed today, for sure. And for me, and Mako said this in a Demacia Cup interview and amusingly it was after iBoy called them a bad team. <laughs> he said, I will talk on iBoy's behalf. They're just a new team. He actually thinks that individually they're very good players and that they will do super well. And I'm not surprised that we're in week one of the LPL and they're not a team right now. They're just good players mm -hmm. and they're outclassed in an individual sense. That's my biggest concern today. So moving forwards, Rogue Warriors need to come up with some kind of strategy and actually implement their 5v5 play, but so far, expected. Yeah, yeah. before we carry on, we are going to have an interview very shortly, so make sure to stay tuned for that.
that. But afterwards, so stick around, we will be broadcasting a third game that's happening over on the other stream right now. So Sooning versus LGD. But we'll continue this conversation for us. Uh, I was just going to tag on to Rusty in that, like, I, I completely agree with your point. Um, but I almost feel like because they lose individually, like, that's expected. Rogue Warriors are never going to have, like, that superstar talent to be able to muscle with the likes of RNG, yeah, Invictus yeah. Gaming, and EDG. So it's like, unfortunately, yes, we expect it because you are a new team that you're not going to have any synergy, but that's exactly what you need to have because otherwise you're never going to be a top team. They're just going to Team Liquid this, I think, honestly. It's supportive players. And how many different supportive players can we put together into a single team and yeah. then just say, fly, fool, and, like, <laughs> expect them to actually succeed? It's... Very dangerous what they have done with Rogue Warriors and put that ensemble together as a full team. Okay, but then who becomes the carry? Who do you want to see be the carry on that team? Flawless. Flawless? I mean, if you look at... The, the exciting thing is, is, theoretically, you could have a 2015 Dwayne B. Swift uh, type of bromance between the mid and jungle again. Dwayne B. was known as a, a secondary support a lot of times. He used to main Morgana mid and then just constantly... It was almost like Mac noon esque Like, Swift would go in and every resource would be given to Swift. I want Flawless to be the new Swift to Dwayne B. Yep, 100% agree. I think it's all on Flawless. Maybe Mouse steps up and plays more carries, but SMLZ and Flawless are the two people that I would say need to just be those big carries. Yeah, yeah 100% SMLZ can't just be sat at bot lane farming away while stuff is happening. But we are going to take a quick break while we set up for our interview where Clement will be taking that one. <laughs> 